So how do you attract new business so you constantly don't have to chase it? Hi, I'm Mike Cuevas, the Real Estate Marketing Dude, and this podcast is all about building a strong personal brand people have come to know, like, trust, and most importantly, refer. But remember, it is not their job to remember what you do for a living, it's your job to remind them. Let's get started. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of the Real Estate Marketing Dude podcast. And most of you have been listening to this show for years. Um, know us as video. And we haven't done with video, video marketing and all that other stuff. And we haven't done many podcasts recently on video. But um, the title of this one is How to Shoot Videos That Don't Suck. And um, folks, I can tell you that in the last few years, all the videos we've created, the thousands of videos we created... Um, there is a formula here and it doesn't matter if you're ugly, you're fat, you stutter. It doesn't matter. The biggest, I would say, reservation I get from people when they're trying to get on camera and they would hire us would be like, I'm too boring. I'm ugly. I have a face made for radio. Um, none of that shit matters when it comes to video. Um, you have to know two things, how to, main, how to maintain and retain attention and how to take people through a story, essentially, and add value to them while you're doing it. So we brought on Mr. Steve Stockman, who's wrote a book on how to shoot videos that don't suck. This dude's in LA. He creates shit for people and he's uh, very creative and he's going to break down, I don't know, let's call it the uh, infrastructure of a successful video, if that's okay. Um, but without further ado, let's go ahead and introduce our guest and we're going to break it down for you guys. How to create videos that people are actually going to watch and uh, that you'll feel Happy to put out there on social media, YouTube, and all the above. So, Steve, how you doing? Why don't you tell everyone a little bit about who the hell you are, where you're from, and um, let's get into this. I have all kinds of questions for you. I'm doing great. Thank you for uh, thank you for having me. So, I, I do uh, TV shows, uh, done a feature film, music videos. Basically, I've been in Los Angeles making a living as a director and a writer and producer for quite a long time, and I like to teach about video. Uh, you know, when the big video revolution started, it, it started to be like a doctor at cocktail parties, you know, you'd walk in, but instead of saying, hey, could you look at this boil on my neck? They'd go, you know, I've got a video. Could you look at it for me and tell me how it is? And what was funny about it was that it was almost always a series of related problems that were perfectly understandable because in the olden days, I don't know if you remember the olden days, but nobody asked you to make videos in the olden days. In the olden days, videos were things that people who were professionals like me made and normal people never made them. And in fact, were so excited to see themselves on a TV screen when they walked through the, the video store at the mall that they would point and smile at it, you know, which we don't do anymore either now that everything is on video all the time. So, um, so I wrote this book uh, and uh, how to shoot video that doesn't suck is in nine languages and 250,000 plus copies. You can get it wherever books are. But the reason I wanted to talk to you is I just did a video course also that's um, designed to help people really understand how to make video that other people will want to watch. So let's break it down. Where is everyone going wrong? Well, I think the first the first most important thing to think about when you think about video is what you watch, right? Because even though none of us or many of us are not professional videographers, um, we understand video. We've been watching it since we were born, basically. And so we speak the language, at least we understand it, you know? Um, and so... If you trust your instincts, that's probably one of the first rules of video, which is if you're doing a video for a house or a real estate project and you're looking at it and going, oh, this is crap, um, it's crap, you know? So the director's job, oddly enough, is to stand up and go, this is the way it should be. This is the color it should be. This is where the actor should stand. This is how I want to point the camera. And directors get paid a lot of money to do that. If you're running your own business or your own your own real estate business, you have to be willing to do that for your videos and be real honest about what you like and what you don't like, and don't put anything out there that you wouldn't choose to watch. Good point. So you, that's, sorry, go ahead. Where, 
I feel like a lot of, at least in businesses, when they start making videos, um, one of the biggest problems I see is they, they treat it like a sales pitch from the get go. Um, and it's, and I get it guys, like we're taught to sell our services. And if you believe you're the best person in the job for it, you should. However, um, if you're constantly just selling your shit, well, people are going to tune you out eventually because you're not adding anything of value, no differently. And I say this every show almost. If you talk to your wife about work every freaking day, she's going to divorce you because you have nothing else interesting to say. Well, if all you're doing is just trying to get me to give you money, well, it's the same thing. You have to have, there's a format here that has to take place for people to actually consume your content because if they're dropping off, 80% of people drop off in the first eight seconds. I think it's even higher than that. Um, so every bit of it adds a lot of value to it. Um, yeah, so a, a way to think about it is, is, um, think of it as a transaction, you know, you are like providing your video needs to provide people with an experience that they actually value because we can get from our phones to a billion other videos besides your crappy video in three seconds. Right. So there's no reason for us to stick around unless we're getting value from the transaction of watching. So we need to be entertained. We need to be intrigued. We need to be taken for something of a journey, a trip. We need to uh, go on a ride. And we need to. We need to be able to feel like we got something out of it. And the benefit of that is if we do, we're going to come back for more later. We're going to be willing to trust you. And if we don't trust you, we are never going to watch another one of your videos. Uh, and that's a really important thing that, that people don't, don't immediately understand until they start to think about the way they watch videos, because it's pretty much the same thing. Why is it that never before in the history of mankind could a little six inch device like this make a 300 pound grown man break at the knees. And why do we get so damn, oh my God, it's, it's a camera, guys. I always tell um, people, you don't have to watch it. Like, if you don't like your video, don't post it. Therefore, why are you nervous shooting it? Yeah, in fact, you have to not post it if you don't like it, right? Yeah. Because nobody <laughs> That's else is sort of the rule. It. Yeah, it's disrespectful. I mean, think about... Think about your behavior. I mean, you go to Netflix, not because you want them to punch you in the face or ask you for money, but because you want to sit down and watch things that make you feel something or take you on a trip or entertain you. And because they do such a good job of that, you go back every day and you see what's on Netflix. And I think that businesses can do the same. I think if you're, if you're killing it with your, uh, and there've been examples of this throughout you know, online history. But if you're if you're killing it with videos that people enjoy, they will return. Um, and that's that's the game, right? Uh, is to make people want to come back and look at what you're doing. So I think you're right when you talk about the idea that that it doesn't really matter who you are. You need to find out what is the way I like to put it is you have to find out what's magical about you and about your relationship with your customers and figure out a way to get that across in a video, if that makes sense. Yep. And it doesn't mean you're selling it, guys. You know, you don't have to sell it. You need to demonstrate it. Yeah. A lot of real estate agents always go out and like, I've been in the business for, oh, I'm already off. Hey, I'm, I've been, in, I've been selling house. Later, peace, I'm out. It's more of like, like nobody's watching your content and your job isn't to tell, it's to remind uh, at least if you're trying to build a brand on on, on video, if, if you're just constantly telling people you're going to last for three or four months, you're going to run out of shit to say. But when you're just constantly understand how to remind people consistently what you do for a living, especially those of you who are in referral-based businesses, well, you become unforgettable. But you have to have that storyline that they remember by and think about every single video that you watch on television. There's that one thing that you follow. Most of you don't even know what it is. Like uh, take Joe Rogan, for example. He's got a great podcast, right? He's got a huge podcast following. And people watch that show um, I believe for his authenticity. Um, but people know what they're going to get. And Joe, he never has to sell his show. He just sort of tells, he just tells a story each and every time. Right. And people come yeah. back for that. So um, what's your advice for people? Like, how do they overcome that, that piece? Because how do you create stories is what I think is the key storytelling. How do you create yeah. stories on your business without selling your services all the time? Because when you could crack that, you'll never run out of things to say on video. 
This is exactly correct. I, I totally agree with you. Um, so here's how you do it. First, if you have a business, you have your real estate business and you've successfully sold properties, then you have some idea, even if you haven't sat down to think about it, who your great customers are and who your less great customers are. So what you want to start with is a profile of your great customers. And great customers are the ones who get you, who come back to you because uh, they see things in you. They say things like, I like the way you show this property, or I like the fact that you thought of me for this one and you didn't bother me with this other one. Or I like the style of house that you tend to represent. Or I like the owners that you work with when I'm buying property from you. Something about you is bringing people back to you. And so the first thing you need to understand is what those things are. And the way to get to it is identify your best customers, literally make a list of all your favorite customers, the ones you would walk through fire for, the ones who would walk through fire for you, where you, you work with them and you feel like, this is great. I could work with this person all day. Who are those people? What do you love about them? And what do they love about working with you? And you will find some commonalities running through those lists. And that's step one. It's not like you don't need fancy market research. You just need to think a little bit about what makes you great, honestly, for your very best and most lucrative customers. And that will give you some clues about what your audience wants from you. Because the best thing you could possibly do is attract more of those kinds of people, right? The ones who are going to love you, make have fun with you, make you feel great, and buy from you. So, so let's give you guys some examples. Um, here's a good one that if you're a, uh, we had a client a while ago, and he's a dog uh, rescuer. That's what he was, and he happened to sell real estate second. So you got to figure out what you are first, and then what you do second is that you sell real estate or you do loans or whatever that is. So um, how would this guy go out and shoot videos? on a, um, for their, for, and, and not talking about real estate, because you don't always want to talk about real estate either. You want to, you want to remind people what you do. So what he would do instead of him going out and doing, um, well, if he was going to do a housing tour, he would open up though, where the dog would sleep. Right. And he's, 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 he's creating videos that have the best dog backyards. He's creating videos on local community, dog parks, restaurants that are dog friendly. And all of it is real estate and community, but his personal brand, you get a lot you get to know whom he is, right? We had another person that would do their military. So like, all right, great. We created a show called San Diego Salute. And um, he would just literally go around town and remind people that he was in real estate, but he would focus on the different monumental and uh, call it antique type tourist attractions in San Diego, which is a ton of military installations. He would focus on military owned uh, small businesses. And he even created a buyer boot camp and a seller boot camp to determine sort of how he portrays you. In other words, he's got your back, right? So there's a communication strategy here. And I think that's where a lot of people struggle with. They're like, well, who am I? And is it hard without identifying what the hell your own brand is to create any type of videos that people will watch? Yeah. And I and I think that's that goes to, I think it's hard for people to uh, admit what's great about them. Like we're kind of a little bit conditioned to not go, oh, well, I'm great at this and I'm great at this. And that's why I say, look at your customers and kind of let them tell you in a way or kind of pull from that list what's great about you. I love the dog story, um, but you know, it. you can go way, there's millions of things. Like maybe you're the person who um, really loves uh, Spanish style houses and renovating them. Love you know, it. maybe maybe you're the person who has a perfect eye for minimal renovations that'll help a house flipper really kill it without screwing over their customers. Love maybe, it. you know, maybe you're, um, you know, a water properties person and you love boats. And so you're going to make your, your videos and your essence about that. And that's all great. Um, and the dog thing is wonderful because it's it's about you. Like it's about that guy and the fact that he loves dogs. So what do you love that you can share with your customers that they in turn, you know, already from making this list that they love about you, um, that you can put into your video in some way? Yep. 
Yeah. Cause I mean, you guys have to be excited about it too. Like the creator needs to be excited about the content they're creating. Otherwise when they're creating it, um, it just doesn't come out well. Right. Um, like you have to like, like your own stuff. Otherwise, uh, people will look at it and know that you look constipated for a reason. You're not very excited about it. Um, and that's a, a equally as important you guys. Um, when we're breaking down, um, a video and people get so held up on scripts, right? What's the script? What's the script say? I need to see the script. I've never seen anyone script a video, reading a script and it turn out well, as much as using a script as like a guideline, mm -hmm. right? Because they always revert to reading and it's very hard to be authentic um, when you're reading something, right? So what do you, what's your view on scripts? How does someone approach, like, great, you have a good video idea. Um, walk me through, like, how do you script something like that? Because that's where a lot of people get stuck. They worry well, so I much about what they're going to say versus how they're going to say it. Well, some people are very good at it. And so those people should go ahead and do it, right? But I think part of what you're saying and the and a, a point I want to kind of tack on here is that you don't need to do something in a video and you shouldn't do something in a video that you're bad at. So if you are not a script reader, then you might want to instead um, bring a shot list with you to the house that you're going to shoot. Um, and just work off that shot list and sort of, you know, point the camera, get a really great shot of the kitchen, talk for a couple minutes and do a couple takes just off the top of your head about what's great about that kitchen or the thing that you want to bring to people's attention. And then in edit, just pick the best piece that works and use the part of your voiceover that works without having to script it and make yourself uh, feel awkward. You also don't want to be on camera if you're awkward on camera. But what could happen, like if you're awkward talking to the camera, then there's no reason that you can't have your assistant shoot you talking to the clients and use pieces of that, right? Then you don't have to talk to the camera. We can just take pieces of what you said to the clients and, uh, and paste that and edit it into your house video, for example. Um, so I think it's important, your, your big point is really important, which is don't do something on video that makes you feel awkward and miserable because that will show every time. Yep, absolutely. What do you, um, let's just put ourselves in a, I'm a realtor. I know I need to create videos. What do I do next? So if you've got this, this, um, kind of audience profile about what makes them magical, um, what makes you magical to your audience, rather. What you want to think about is how you want to express it. And the guy with the dogs is a great example. He just pulls that out and puts it in there. And even if you don't have a dog, if he does it in an amusing way or an emotional way or a way that shows you cute dogs that you can appreciate even though you don't have one of your own, that's a hook. He's going to, you're going to remember him. It's authentic to him. He looks good doing it. He's clearly interested in it. And everybody can like that, right? Yeah. So what is it that's magical about you that you can put out there? If you have a great sense of humor, you should be narrating your videos and putting that great sense of humor in the videos. Um, if you have a really great eye for detail and you want to talk about uh, you know, the detail in a house from the 1860s uh, on the East Coast somewhere, you should be getting that knowledge out there and you should put that kind of narration or discussion in your videos, not 30 minutes of it, but if it's a really important thing for you and your personality and it's something that your clients love about you, real estate videos do not need to be boring floats through the house with a drone shot. They can be narrated. They can have the personality of the realtor attached to them, whether it's narration or on camera. And they should be fun and entertaining for the audience in some way. One of the best listing videos I saw, I think it was last year. Um, it was like right around Christmas time. And then it was just a regular, there's no words in it, but they put an elf on the shelf in every room. That's fine. Right? And it was just one little thing, but it was a human sized elf on the shelf. I'm pretty sure the elf on the shelf was the realtor. But he was like positioned himself like in, in every room shot they had, you know, the elf is always like doing some fun. So he would be frozen and then he was stuck in that position in that room. But that was what made it um, extremely eye catching. Um, I remember when I sold the house in Chicago, a friend of mine, a good friend of mine, he's a huge Metallica um, 
collector, like a memorabilia collector. Dude has over three hundred thousand dollars of Metallica albums, signatures, all the bandmates. You name it. He's got the most rare Metallica artifact. So I remember when I started that video. It was like, this is the world's best man cave you're ever going to see. And I was at his drum set. like, <laughs> And that was done on purpose. I did very well just because I drew them in. I picked the, the most interesting part of the house. So the the hook, though, is where you guys got to focus on the most. What do you think that most important part of the video is? Would you agree that that first eight seconds, 10 seconds, five seconds starts the. I, the I do. And, I do. And I don't. So. I think that we 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 want to be careful about focusing too much on the SEO and hookiness of it all and more focused on the quality of the overall thing. So what I I think in the in the real estate industry one of the things that's true is if you are actively shopping for say a house and your realtor says, you should watch this video for this house that I think will be right for you, you're going to give it more than eight seconds, unless it's a complete waste of your time, right? Because you've been told by your realtor that you should watch it. Now, the so the question is, what's the whole video look like? And so I think that, I think that you don't want to do something in the first eight seconds that's stupid, and you certainly want to do something in the first eight seconds that intrigues people. But I think that to focus too much on that kind of, you know, jam them at the beginning is less genuine and more gimmicky than we need to be, right? What we really need to do is get the, the value proposition for them, the entertainment transaction proposition up front. What am I going to give you should be clear in that first eight seconds. So even if the realtor says, you see a beautiful picture of the house and you hear the realtor going, hey, this is 1157 Colvin Avenue. It's perfect if you love 1850s renovations that are authentic as hell, right? So that's not flashy, but it gives nope. you that benefit in the first eight seconds. And you're now going, oh, I do like those kinds of houses. I should watch the rest of this. Right. And then then the consistency of your production throughout will make that person, hopefully, when they're done with that video, look at your website to see what else there is on your website that's for sale and then call their realtor and go, hey, I saw this other one on this guy's website. You know, so I think it's or, all about overall quality or even call the realtor and be like, hey, why aren't you? This is when it really works well. I was like, hey, this other realtor is doing all these videos on all of his listings. Why aren't you doing that for mine? Now you're like, oh, okay. shit. Um, exactly. That happens all the time. Um, yeah. In terms of maintaining attention throughout the video, like what other tips, how do you get people to watch towards the end of the video? Um, you get, you get them interested up front. You got to tell them what the hell the promise is. What are you going to, what are you going to watch this for? Like what's in it for me? But then how do you maintain attention? I think that um, it depends on what the purpose of the video is. So um, are we talking like uh, like walkthrough type videos or videos more about your firm overall? Because So I think with most realtors and most lenders, they're going to create like more of an ongoing series. They're not necessarily like their sales videos that they're running ads to, but mm -hmm. their ongoing video marketing strategy that sort of keeps them at the forefront. Um, so they're creating a, a show called a YouTube channel and they're creating consistently each and every month. Some short form, some long form. Um, and that's the top question I get is like, hey, dude, how do I get people to watch more of these? And like on sites like YouTube, people are so worried about that because you guys want your videos to get seen and shown. Well, you got to increase the watch time on those if you want that to happen on YouTube. So you have to maintain that attention. So more so of like a, that perspective. How do you get people to watch towards the end of it? So I, I think step one is to make sure that your intent for your video is clear. So let's suppose that you're a real estate lender. Um, I'm making this up, of course, because I'm not a real estate lender, but I borrowed money for real estate, so I, I have some idea how it works. So you're a real estate lender, and you have made your list of customers who are your favorite customers, and you know what they love about you, and you're thinking about presenting yourself as the guy who's going to come up with, or woman who's going to come up with incredibly innovative uh, financing solutions for you, even if you've only got 10% to put down, right? Yeah. 
And so your intent is to make people who feel like they only have 10% down, uh, who feel like they can do some very good deals, right? And with your guidance, perhaps, perhaps that's your intent. By having that clear intent and setting it out like that, now, when you think about your video, you can judge everything against how well are we doing on that score? And you know that your video is done when you've done it. So when you've done a video that, that says to people, hey, you've only got 10% down, I can make a deal with you that's gonna make you look to the box seller like you had 90% cash, right? And so, that means that as you design the video, you're thinking about, okay, here's my point to them. My point is that I can make your 10% down transaction work phenomenally well, right? My point is that I'm an innovative thinker. So now you can say, I know what my intent is. I know who my audience is. It's these 10% down people who love me. And I know that my point to them is I'm going to make this really innovative and magical for you so you can close your deal. Now you get to the good part, which is creating a way to do that. And there's an infinite number of ways to do that, but there's also an infinite number of ways to screw that up. And by having this intent laid out and know what your video is going to be about, you can avoid all the ones that are going to screw it up, right? So yeah. you can lay your video out as, as interviews or with past clients, or you're going to uh, stage a meeting with a buyer where you're uh, sitting next to the buyer and, and talking to the seller and you'll stage that and make a skit out of it. Or you're going to report on some great news that you just read about this and make it really uh, easy for clients to understand. Any approach that you take, you know what your goal is, you know who you're talking to, and that way you'll know when you're done. And so people will always watch till the end if you stop at the point that you're finished and where you've delivered something of great value to them. Um, and it, does that make sense? Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. You got to call out um, just to, to rewind, guys. Um, we're saying who, what, what is this about in the beginning? Who is it for? What are you going to get out of watching it? Small intro and then um, deliver on your points. But if you notice, he did something important there. He, he had a little teaser um, and he said it very nonchalantly. And he said, um, I don't know if you could rewind what you just said there, because he, he said in the video, like, but then there's other things that you shouldn't do as well. We'll get to that in a little bit. But first, you know, like that little that little thing is like, what do you mean what I shouldn't do? That that sort of is like a pattern interrupt in a sense where you got to be like, oh, OK, so maybe I do need to stick up to the end of this as well. So like, right. let's let's say if it's a. All right, so let's go. Here's a good way to do it. Let's just take that man cave example. Tell me if this is what you're saying here. So I'm about to show you the how. I'm going to show you a three hundred thousand dollar. Well, actually, I probably wouldn't say that in a video because I don't want anyone to rob his house. Um, but I'm going to show you the world's best Metallica man cave. But just in a minute, the first place we're going to stop here is going to be in the kitchen and blah 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 blah. So I set a little bit of a teaser to keep them going. Is that what you're saying? Um, I think that's a big part of it. I think. Um... I think that everything you're doing wants to lead to the next thing, if that makes sense. So I think you mentioned up front story, right? So story structure is beginning, middle, and end, mm -hmm. right? And it's just that simple. So if you're laying out your video about the man cave, at the beginning, you might start with, um, you know, say a real estate beginning. If you're showing the house, you might start by saying, hey, normally I would do a real estate video for you by showing you this house and walking in the front door, just like you're going to do in real life. But I got to show you something first. That's good. And then you might get down to the man cave first and interrupt that flow. That's and, then, and then the middle is, you know, here's how we got to that man cave. You know, here's the rest of it which turns out to be a very civilized, great entertainer's house that isn't weirdly man cavey at all. It just has this special room, you know, behind a wall, <laughs> bookshelf funny. wall, yeah. you know, 
and uh, you know that your whole family will enjoy living in. And then at the end, you talk about you know uh, uh, this is a whole package, and if you're the right person for this, you're going to need to see it. And and here's when you can do that. Um, yeah, so they have good. a little story structure for them and that keeps them intrigued and sitting through the whole thing. So if you guys are, are outlining these, like just literally go back to the way your teacher told you to write an essay, there's an attention guider, there's an introduction, there's body point one, two, and three, then there's an outro or conclusion and there's your video script, you know? Um, but you should take some, don't wing it, like take some time to list it out. Like I'm going to go here first and then I'm going to go here first and you got to make it make sense. Um, so that people watch it, but it, it shouldn't be any more difficult than that. Um, now the other, the other videos I see people make are like ones you use for ads. And those are like very highly scripted. They have certain, uh, mechanisms in there to get people to take action and, and all of that. But we're talking about just making general content videos. And I, every single one I've ever created always follows that story, hook, attention, getter, body, outro, hook, attention, getter, body, outro. Um, and it just never fails. And as long as you could write an essay, well, I mean, it's all you're doing on camera. The difference is writing versus filming, right? You're still telling a story either way. Yeah, I think it's remarkable. You know, I, I talk about video as a language um, and people say, well, editing, I don't understand editing. And it's like, well, it's cut, copy and paste like Microsoft Word, you know, and and you're exactly right that telling a story is who's the hero what do they do at the beginning? What happens in the middle? And how does it all work out at the end? Yeah. And telling those kinds of stories, it very much is exactly the same as Mrs. Cooper taught you in fourth grade when you had to diagram sentences. Yep. You know, it's here's even a shot, you know, noun verb, an individual shot in a movie that you watch is going to be John Wick slams a guy in the face. That's the shot. The, the noun is John Wick. The verb is slams. The object is the guy who gets his face mashed, right? That's the end of the shot. So all filmmaking and all video making is exactly like English class way back when. And the closer you can stick to that, uh, the better off you're going to be. Yep. Telling stories, not making statements. Yeah, Telling I think stories, I, not selling your services. I think the magic is in trying to get your personality into what you're doing. Um, especially if you're doing repeat business with a lot of the same people as a way of building your business is, is to think about what makes you great and think about how you're comfortable presenting it. Because, you know, you see a lot of, um, I've been shopping actually. And, and I also sold a house recently and in the, in the, did you like your realtor? Did yes, actually. Good. That's um, hey, that's that's a rare thing. You might have had a good one. That was like a needle took, in the took a lot of work. <laughs> But I, I looked at all the videos that people were doing for realtors, and around here they're pretty high end. Yeah. Yeah, they all look kind of the same. You know, it's all walk in the front door. Here's what you see in the front door. Here's what you see in the living room. Here's oh look, there's the kitchen, and then there's a drone shot at the end, and. And I appreciate the simplicity of that, but it looks just like the MLS listing pictures where it's exactly the same chronology or the virtual walkthrough, which is exactly the same chronology. So if you're going to bother to do a video, there needs to be more to it. There needs to be your realtor's analysis of why this property is great or finding something special about it or something that you would notice about it that no one else will notice about it that you can add to in a narration or an on-screen appearance. Um, you know, I, I don't understand why realtors don't all narrate their videos of these walkthroughs. It's like, it, it's just, it's so important to be able to share your point of view about why this house or property is going to be great for the right buyer. Um, and the more you do that, the more credibility you have with buyers and the more it's going to work for you. I mean, just look at every listing and just pretend you're writing an essay on it. I mean, that's what it comes down to, you guys. If you're going to write a personify the house, literally, if it was a person, now go ahead and tell the story about that person. Um, very cool. Very cool. Any uh, final thoughts you want to add? Any tips? Anything else you want to add in here? And then, uh... I think just the 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 no no BS rule, which is if you look at a video that you've just done and something about it isn't working there's something technically wrong with it or 
some shots are too long or you're just bored in the middle of it, you just have to fix it. Don't put out stuff that isn't good because it hurts you to do that. You know, it's it's a first do no harm thing. Um, or as editors say, when in doubt, cut it out, right? It, you're not going to hurt yourself by not showing someone something, but you are going to hurt yourself by showing them something lame. So pay close attention to what you're making and have fun with it and put something of yourself in it. And if you do that consistently over time, you'll get better at it and it will start to really work for you. I agree. I agree. Why don't you tell uh, people where they can get your book or visit your site to learn more? Uh, the book you can get pretty much anywhere. It's called How to Shoot Video That Doesn't Suck. There's an audio version. There's an electronic version. You can get all those. Um, and the new course I just did is 22 Lessons. Uh, it's also called How to Shoot Video That Doesn't Suck. You can get it on my website, stevestockman.com. So it's 22 Lessons and Examples and me talking to you in a way that hopefully will demonstrate how not to make a terribly boring teaching video. Love it. Thank you folks for listening to another episode of the Real Estate Marketing Media Podcast. We'll see you guys next week, same place, same time, and enjoy your day. But remember, right now with the way the market is, you got to focus on creating a whole lot of buzz and attention because a lot of people aren't. And the reality is the more attention you have, the more clients you're going to have because real estate is just a giant popularity contest. There's no better way to build your personal brand than with video, period. End of case. See you guys next week. Bye. Thank you for watching another episode of the Real Estate Marketing Dude podcast. If you need help with video or finding out what your brand is, visit our website at www.realestatemarketingdude.com. We make branding and video content creation simple and do everything for you. So if you have any additional questions, visit the site, download the training, and then schedule time to speak with a dude and get you rolling in your local marketplace. Thanks for watching another episode of the podcast. We'll see you next time.